So what we do as a business is we actually look at microbes and identify, um, particularly with customers, what they're missing in their soil. And we, we look at the, the types of diversity they have in their soil, whether that be aerobic, anaerobic. Um, and basically then we, we breed those specific species and, and then impregnate them into the soil, whether it be via brews, whether it be by through compost, um, yeah, depending on the applications. Well, they have a massive impact on food. Um, you know, probably, I can definitely say that 50% um, as a minimum of our um, nutrition comes from microbes, definitely. Um, I mean, we've had customers, particularly uh, watermelon growers, um, with applications of 30 cubes of compost over about four hectares. They've gone from 200 kilos per hectare, or 200 um, kilos per bin, up to 400 purely with a good organic compost injection, uh, by good biostimulants, and, and stimulating that biology. So. You know, if you get an increase of that much, you, you're obviously going to have much more um, better quality fruit, last longer on the shelf, uh, it's a lot more nutritional. There's compost and there's compost, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, from my, my point of view, it's, I've always gone in with the, with the thought that um, if you make it 100% about, about your heart and your soul, then you're going to produce something pretty special. And I think if you make it about money, it becomes uh, this big commercial entity which becomes sort of uh, it's like a bit of a sellout, I suppose, and um, to a degree. I'm not saying that's what everyone's like. Yeah. But, um, and then what tends to happen is you find that it becomes this big commercial thing and it's all about getting it out the back door. And we start to lose the quality of what we're, or, or the, the potential of what we're trying to achieve, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, there is some pretty substandard products out there, and I think that's due to legislation and testing that yep. they are substandard, and that's probably something that needs to be reviewed quite heavily. I think I think the biggest sort of momentum shift is that the price of fertilisers. The, um, the detrimental effects that fertilizers are having, the, the yields are getting smaller, weaker, uh, and then, and modern day agronomy has a lot to do with it as well. Um, you know, because what happens is we need more, 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 and what's tending to happen is they're just wiping out all the diversity. If you had a farm five, 10 years ago, and you were producing 2,000 hectares, it was profitable. Mm -hmm. Now it's 4,000 is the profitable stage. So, you know, another 2,000 hectares is, is a lot of money, man. Mm -hmm. and, and it's getting to that stage. And even the fours and the threes and the fours, depending where you are, obviously marginal countries, there's all different sorts of countries, but, but I think, um, you know, when you have to start pushing up the amount of acreage you've got to do, or hectares, rates, just to cover your costs, it's pretty ordinary. Well, it just lifts the pressure, doesn't it? Mm. Well, it puts more pressure on, puts financial burdens on families, yeah. you know, and there's some beautiful wheat people out there, man, in the wheat belt that are doing some amazing things, yeah. but they're just so pressured, they're pressured by banks, you know, they're pressured by chemical companies, they're just, and there's no way out. And um, we're, we're blessed and fortunate enough to be able to be working with, with probably about 20 uh, wheat growers throughout West Australia. Um, and this year we're going to do a fair bit of trialling with a lot of these guys on different techniques of how we can manage their biology better. Mm -hmm. um, the no-till scenarios, and, and there's a lot of people no-tilling now because they've, they've seen the advantage of not tilling. Um, you know, just using using some techniques that we've learned in other areas um, throughout West Australia. In the wheat belt, for example, the average chem, chem per hectare is anywhere to 60 to 80 dollars a hectare. We're going in around about eight to 10 dollars a hectare. Wow. Um, and actually so, pounding on your system instead yeah. of depleting it. Yeah, but looking at also, not just the biology, but how do we build that carbon within that system? And you know what I mean? So um, it, it's sort of a no-brainer, really. Mm -hmm. I, I think that there's very few people that practice what we practice in Australia. 
I think it's only only what we do is the only people that I know of that really specialise in this field. Mm -hmm. um, and I could be wrong um, out there in YouTube world. <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, there are people out there that are doing some amazing things, and we can really you just got to weed yourself through all the all the bullshit, basically. Yeah. Well, we really feel like you're doing something important, mate, so thank you um, for what you're doing. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having a chat. Thanks, guys.